Hi guys, I'm gonna to talk to you today about this LASIK complications nightmare that has had me living with terrible eye pain and facial pain for the last three plus years. There are a lot of risks of laser eye surgery that most people don't know about, or they just briefly glance over while signing their rights away. The first thing I wanna say is that the story of what I'm gonna tell you of what had happened to me could have been completely avoidable had it not been for the corporate greed along with the bureaucratic inefficiency and oversight of large LASIK centers none of which should have any place in the medical industry where the stakes are quite frankly way too high. I never should have been a candidate for laser eye surgery because I have severe dry eye from being prescribed anti-acne drugs when I was younger. Accutane is a terrible drug and I was prescribed way too much of it for way too long, but that's a whole nother story. I was mostly asymptomatic from this, but I couldn't comfortably wear contact lenses with my dry eyes, which is what made me interested in LASIK in the first place. Now, I'm not going to say where I had my LASIK done or who did it, because really it doesn't matter. I've spoken with many people all around the world who have very similar stories to me. The place that I went to, though, was very large and they were heavy on advertising. The reason I mention this is because I had a faint memory of hearing somewhere that you might not be able to get LASIK if you had dry eyes. So, of course, not knowing anything about LASIK or really dry eyes even for that matter, I Google this and what do you know? The first thing that popped up was an ad for the place where I ended up eventually getting laser surgery done. The ad was specifically targeted at people wondering if they could get LASIK while having dry eyes. And it didn't even answer the question, but instead talked to you about how you could come in for a free consultation in which they would tell you if you were a good candidate. Now me being a naive 25 year old who had just finished university and moved to the city, I assumed they must only have the best intentions. So I scheduled my consultation and thought nothing of it. So a little side note here, but did you know in some countries like France, it's actually illegal to advertise for elective surgeries like LASIK? So anyways, the day of the consultation came, they had some technicians. Now note, these aren't even optometrists, they're just technicians doing a few different tests, apparently that determined my candidacy. None of these results were ever shared with me though, until much later when I started having problems and I demanded my medical files. I then saw that they actually did test for dry eye and I came up positive, but they never informed me of it. At the end of the testing, the technician, a little guy who looked younger than I, asked me if I had any questions. So I brought up my original question about how I heard that I might not be a candidate if I have dry eyes. He very reassuringly told me that having dry eyes wouldn't affect the surgery at all. And I would just have extra dry eyes for about three months or so after the surgery. So once again, I naively trusted that he was an expert and therefore I had no reason to question what he was saying. Now I remember this word for word because I've thought back on this scene way too many times and it still haunts me today. After that, I had nobody else to consult. The surgeon didn't even have a word with me. He just shook my hand and then performed the operation that turned my whole life upside down. Now what the technician said was half right. Having dry eyes wouldn't affect the surgery itself, but it would make the healing and recovery process nearly impossible. A lot of people don't even know how LASIK surgery works, but they cut a flap in your cornea, which severs and kills most of your corneal nerves. By the way, the cornea is the most highly innervated spot on your entire body, giving it the ability to produce the most pain. Now, the reason you don't feel any pain after LASIK is because you don't have any nerves left to feel with, as they've all been cut. Your eyes are also extremely dry after LASIK, since it's those same missing nerves that should be responsible for signaling to your lacrimal glands to produce more tears. So for a lot of people like me who do have terrible pain and other problems after LASIK, it doesn't start right away. The problems do start right away, but we can't feel the pain for about three months until our nerves start growing back. So yes, for those first few months, my eyes were extremely dry. If I wasn't constantly blinking or applying eye drops, my vision would get quite blurry, but there was no pain associated with it. And as the technician told me that this was what to expect, I wasn't too worried. Now it was around the three month post-op mark where I started to get worried. My eyes seemed to be getting even drier and they were starting to hurt now too. Yet I was told that they should be improving. It was at this point I decided to schedule a follow-up visit with the LASIK clinic. I ended up being seen by just another technician who had just had a quick look at my eyes and said everything seemed fine. This was a normal part of the healing process and they were probably just dry due to the winter air. Really, everything wasn't fine. These first few months after surgery are actually such a critical time for your nerves to grow back properly. But mine weren't because they weren't getting enough nutrition to grow due to the lack of tears. 
Additionally, because there was a bunch of inflammation on my corneas due to my eyes being so dry, this was even, even further irritating and messing with the nerve growth. And to add insult to injury, because they were so dry, I had to keep using these artificial tears that the LASIK clinic sold me after my surgery, which I found out later contained neurotoxic preservatives, but I was oblivious to this at the time. And no, I'm not making this up. After dropping over three grand on LASIK surgery, they wanted me to buy eye drops from them for $20 that they probably just got for free from some kind of partnership deal. So yeah, my eyes were just getting worse by the day and this was the perfect recipe to end up developing corneal neuropathic pain, which is the dark place where this story is headed. So everything just kept going downhill from there. Every week, my symptoms were worse. I had a near constant burning sensation in my eyes, and at times, it even spread to parts of my face. I kept going back to the LASIK clinic, but they just didn't seem to take my situation very seriously. They would just prescribe some cyclospirin eye drops uh, that can take months to even know if they're helping you or not. And for me, they just made my eyes worse. At this point, I started to doubt the LASIK clinic and began to do my own research as to what was going on, which is when I discovered how serious these problems could become and what poor treatment I was currently getting. I decided to take things in my own hands and find what doctors I wanted to see and what treatments I needed to try. I went back to the LASIK clinic one more time just to try and get a referral to a dry eye doctor and a prescription for autologous serum tears, and they flat out refused to do either for me. Autologous serum tears are eye drops made out of the serum component of your blood. They're a good treatment for patients with corneal neuropathic pain as they contain a lot of growth factors, which can help your damaged nerves regrow. I was eventually able to start securing some appointments with better doctors and acquire some of these prescriptions and products that I needed for proper treatment. But this wasn't until at least six months of my condition steadily deteriorating. If I got proper help sooner, I believe I would be much better off today. The pain would get so bad that I would go to work and I could barely look at the computer screen. And I could hardly think about the task I was assigned as the pain was the only thing resonating through my brain. By this point, I felt like I had somebody just digging their fist into my eye socket, pinching my nose and setting fire to my other eye all at the same time. Eventually, I had to quit working at my job that I really loved as it was just making my eyes even worse and I could now barely even keep them open. I had also been accepted for a master's degree that I had intended to do in my spare time outside of work. This I had to turn down to for obvious reasons. I honestly wasn't sure at this point if I would ever be able to use computers again as the screen's bright light just hurt my eyes way too much. I was unable to work for over three months and all the while I was feeling miserable and hopeless as I just kept spending more and more money to try procedures and products that didn't help me at all or even made me worse and seeing optometrists and ophthalmologists who were of little to no help. I was finally able to get an appointment with Dr. Pedram Hamra, the best specialist in the world for treating corneal neuropathic pain in Boston, Massachusetts. Now, till this point, I felt like I had only been going downhill, and even when I thought things couldn't get any worse, they somehow did. I'd been a complete year since my LASIK surgery. Dr. Hamra was able to finally get me on a treatment plan that had me beginning to show some signs of progress. But even with this treatment plan, it was very slow going. I returned to work not long after, but it still wouldn't be for another six to nine months that I could really look at computer screens without being in tremendous pain. Now, what I haven't talked about yet is that all of this was also an extreme financial burden as none of it was covered by provincial healthcare nor my private work insurance. Some of the most notable costs were paying for autologous serum tears, I previously mentioned, which are $100 a month, and I still use up till this day. I would spend about another $200 every month on prescription eye drops and medications for nerve pain. I got several intense pulse light treatments for my dry eyes, which would cost me $400 a pop. To date, I've probably had to do at least 16 of these. I spent $1,200 to try putting an amniotic membrane over one eye for a week which was extremely painful and left me only seen out of my other eye for the duration of the treatment. And I've done this three times now in total. I then spent a bit over a grand on amniotic fluid eye drops to continue the treatment. I spent over 3K to have a special scleral contact lens custom made that were supposed to help keep my eyes from ever drying out, but they didn't end up helping. Finally, there were all these trips to Boston to see Dr. Hamra, which cost me about $1,500 out of pocket each time. 
I totaled everything up that I'd spent in the first year alone, and it was well over 20k uh, that went towards treating my eyes. I stopped keeping track afterwards, but to date, it would probably be well over 30k by now. Now, this is a ton of money for me, but honestly, I would give every penny I own if it meant I could just have my old eyes back and be rid of these conditions forever. That's how horrible living with this is. Now, working extremely hard on my treatment, I've made very slow progress over the years. At about the three-year mark, I could finally say that most of the time, I'm no longer in pain. But this is thanks to a lot of crutches, which if taken away, I would find myself right back where I started. And I know this as I've recently tried to go without them and it wasn't fun. I have to always keep serum tears on me in a thermos at all times, as I have to use them eight times a day, and they need to be refrigerated. This makes outdoor travel and camping activities very difficult, and that's very frustrating for me as it's something I love doing. I also have to use steroid eye drops on a daily basis, which leave me at a constant risk for developing cataracts or glaucoma, which I have to regularly go and get tested for. I'm dependent on numerous medications for nerve pain, which leave me feeling groggy and tired most of the day, and also affect my short-term memory. Oh, and I have to wear these really cool moisture glasses all day at work, which help keep my eyes from drying out. And other times I have the opposite problem as my punctum are plugged. This is where your tears naturally drain from. And it means that if I'm out and it's windy or it's cold, I end up with tears just running right down my face and I always have to have a tissue on me to dab these away just so I can see properly. So in short, to, uh, to stay relatively stable, I constantly having to take care of my eyes and be very careful of anything that I do and how, how what I do may affect my eyes. Now in closing, I also want to add that despite how bad all this sounds, I truly consider myself one of the very lucky ones. I have perfect eyesight and I was able to go back to work and I can maintain a life that at least has the outward appearance of normalcy. There's a lot of people who have been messed up far, far worse than eye by LASIK surgery and tragically more than a few have taken their own lives because of it. You need only go to lasikcomplications.com or check out their YouTube channel to witness some of these horrific stories. So that's my story up to where I am now. If you're considering LASIK surgery, I suggest you seriously consider these risks. And if you know anyone thinking about getting LASIK, I'd appreciate it if you share this video with them and give this video a like so it can reach more people. If you do decide that you think it's worth these risks, then I really recommend you at least get a second opinion about your candidacy from someone who isn't trying to sell you an elective surgery. And finally, if you do, do go through with it and you have complications, be your own advocate and demand that you get effective treatment early on. Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it.